Today we're going to look at my favorite, Defensive right. Hog Index. Yep. Now this is a great number because it's simply defined, quantifies the best defensive front, front in football, yep. and you do it by three different categories. Yeah, and we do it offensively too. Uh, it's uh, on defense, uh, yards per attempt allowed. How, how effective are teams running the ball against you? Negative pass plays. How many f sacks and interceptions do you force because... We count interceptions because often they're a function of, of pressure on the quarterback. And then how you do on third down defense, usually those short yardage situations. And we just put them all together and, and kind of the, the top team in the average of those three indicators is the top team on our defensive hog index. We try to quantify something, Bush, that people normally do with the eye test. We try to put a number to it. All right, so let's look at this quality stat, defensive hog index, which, as you've mentioned before, is named after with all due respect to your favorite, the Hogs, the Washington Redskins Absolutely. Yep. of the 90s yep. and, the, and the 80s. Um, but if we look at the top four in your ranking this week and the bottom four, of course, this is why it's a quality stat. The top four, the Ravens, the Jets, yep. the Niners, and Houston are 24-9 and nine in 2011. So when you add up yards per attempt against or, uh, um, negative pass plays and um, third down efficiency, yep. I mean, it tells you what type of defenses they really have. Exactly, had. and that's what makes a, a stat a quality stat. Are good teams good in that stat, and are bad teams bad in it? And when in the primitive, the early days of cold hard football facts, when the technology wasn't quite as advanced, but what we did is that I looked at charts like this. I created charts of data, and if, if bad teams are up high and good teams are down low, we throw out the indicator. And the great thing about defensive hog index is that it, can, it consistently identifies champions. Uh, for example, we introduced the indicator in 2007. The Giants were number one, won the Super Bowl. In 2008, the Steelers were number one. Not only were they number one, they were number one in every individual component of that indicator. They won the Super Bowl. The Saints were kind of an anomaly, but then last year, the Packers, n number 10 in the defensive hog index, but number one at forcing negative pass plays. And we saw that capability come through and help them win the Super Bowl. And we'll get to the Packers in a second in yep. our next segment, but that's interesting. They're number 10 last year in negative pass plays. No, number 10 overall, but number one in negative pass oh, plays. Negative pass plays, yeah, yeah. number 10 overall. Yeah. So they, weren't, they were in the top third is the point. Yep. Of, of, of the, as, as their defense wasn't great, but it was good enough. And it was good in key things you need to do to win football games. Okay, and finally, uh, to finish up on defensive hog index, a look at the four bottom teams, the Saints, the Colts, the Raiders, and the Titans. Now, the Colts are the worst team in the league, but you look at those other teams, but their record, your fourth Top bottom four rated uh, defensive hog index teams are 14 and 20 this year in 2011. Yeah, and the one you know the Saints are kind of an anomaly, but they have a great quarterback. And in fact, the one team ahead of them in the defensive hog index, the Patriots. We know how bad their defense has been, but the Patriots and Saints, two teams that only because of a great quarterback are able to overcome that. The rest of the teams, you can't stop the run, you can't force negative pass plays, and you can't get off the field on third down. You know what happens, Butch? You can't win football games. He's Kerry Byrne. I'm Butch Stearns. This is Cold Hard Football Facts on TPN.